Hello and welcome to this episode. Uh, I will be monitoring my water meter uh, to collect the values of my water consumption and, and send them to the magic mirror. And to do this, I will actually be using a, a, a project called the AI on the Edge device. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. I will also include a link in the description. Uh, and this is a complete uh, software for monitoring um, well actually any kind of meter it could be electric meter or, or water meter or something uh, and you will configure it to um, for your meter and to retrieve the values that you want it's using an esp32 cam uh, which is available on the many different places it's really cost uh, if, um, not so costly and it's a very good device and the first thing I did was hook it up for a test run and to see how I want to fit it on, on my water meter. Uh, and the next thing will be to create some kind of um, box for this. And I'm using Fusion uh, when I do uh, 3D print stuff. I think it's very useful and it's very simple to design in. So here I've created my box that will fit on the water meter. I'm also adding some ventilation holes um, since the water can sometimes be very cold and I don't want water to accumulate on the lens and so on. So just to be on the safe side, I'm adding some ventilation uh, holes to my, uh, to my design. Uh, actually, what I wanted to test was also the dis distance that I need between the water meter and the camera lens. Uh, I did find out that you can actually adjust the lens a bit for us to get a better focus. So, but th this is a, a good distance and it will produce a good picture. So next I'm creating um, the STL file uh, for exporting from Fusion. And I'm adding it to Cura, which I'm using for slicing my 3D models. And then I transfer it to my Octoprint, which is uh, the software on a Raspberry that is actually doing the, the printing of uh, communicating with my FlashForge um, 3D printer. It doesn't have any built-in communication, so that's why I'm using Octoprint. And of course, then we just have to wait for the printing to finish. So I have my box and I've also put the ESP on, on a piece of board and added a, a connector uh, for the uh, USB so I can download and monitor if needed. And I'm just completing the board now to fit it onto the, to the box. So it actually sticks out a bit from the box. Um, doesn't matter so much. And I think also it will be good for the Wi-Fi antenna. I don't know how good this antenna is, so it will it will work fine like this. Then I just want to make sure it stays in the same place, so the camera is not moving around. So I'm trying to fixate it as best as possible. I'm also adding a, a USB for the power, basically. 
So I will not be downloading through this one. This is just to, to get the power into the box. Add a lid for it as well. That fits fine. And then I have uh, the connector on top. If I need to download or, or monitor the USB in some way, I can just put it there. Now let's see if it fits on the on the water meter. If it's very nicely, I think this one works fine. It's also easy to remove if needed. So the next thing we need to do is to actually download the code into um, the SD card. You need an SD card on the ESP32. And the very, very simple way to do that is to use the web installer. Uh, which you can find in the documentation. I will put the link to that as well. Uh, and for me, that worked very well. It's an easy way to set up the SD card and um, download the code to the SD card, and then you're, you're basically up and running. Uh, and there's a lot of documentation, so if you just go to this site, it will explain the process in details. There are other ways to, to prepare for this as well. So when you connect to your device, um, the initial setup wizard is automatically started. So the only thing you need to do is press next, and then it will take you through certain steps of the calibration. Uh, and the third thing you need to do is that you need to define a, a reference image. So we will click on uh, create new reference to start, um, start the process. And then you take you click on take image and it takes some time for it to retrieve them image and then you can see if it looks good or if you need to adjust the camera and just recreate it or take a new image. But this looks fine. Uh, you need to tell um, the software where the reference marks here are. This is so so the the pictures that are being taken can have a reference mark, so it easily can find the digits later on. So it's important that you find some kind of, of, of reference on your meter and, and that you indicate them. So it um, will be a much better detection if, if the, this works fine. And also if the camera is a slight bit off and so on, it will be able to, to find the reference marks and uh, still be able to detect the values. The next step is then to um, tell the device where the different uh, numbers are. And as you can see, you have to also tell the system how many digits you have. I'm adding five digits here.
and then try to, to fit all the numbers within the squares. And this is for the, was for the digital reading, and then you also have some analog reading, so it will actually read the analog dials here. And you do the same thing here, try to fit the analog meters within the, the circle in this case. And if you need more uh, digits, you can just add it or remove if it's not there. But I use all of them even if it's very detailed. And it will not be really applicable with four, four digits decimal. And then you can see the result here. It has been uh, reading the raw value. Uh, and I can also have some indication of how good it is to detect the different values. And you can make sure that you have a good quality detection. And this looks fine, I think. And the real interesting part is, is actually JSON page, because this is where we will read and retrieve all the information. It's not so much, but the, the values are all here. Uh, and next thing will be to uh, start coding in Python uh, to retrieve these values uh, into my magic mirror. So I open up Visual Studio Code uh, to do the Python code for monitoring the water meter. Uh, it's not really so complicated. Um, the information I need is presented in the JSON URL. Uh, so I created a function here for the water meter or a class, sorry. And I've put in the values that I want to retrieve. Actually, it's all the values that I can get from the meter. Uh, it's the actual value. It's the previous value. And that's it's the raw reading from the meter. And I guess that's before it's accepted by the uh, meter reading and becomes the value. There's also an error and there's a rate value, uh, flow rate value. So we'll be retrieving all of them. Uh, and I'm only using the URL, the get command to get the JSON from the water meter. And then I'm saving the different values in my, in my class. So that's, that's easy enough. Um, I've added the, uh, the threading here as well. So I will be monitoring the water. I don't remember what I said here. It's probably every 30 seconds or something. And then we want to uh, add this to the main. I've moved down here. We will initiate the class first here. We we'll set the IP address and then I will uncomment uh, the function for the water meter here. So this, this will essentially update the data from the water meter every 30 seconds. And then we want to present it on the, on the pages naturally. Let's find that. Um, we can have a look at the top one here. So first I add it to the, the bug page. And here I want to show all values. This. And then we want to add it to the main page. And here I've actually done an extra function as well. Uh, I want it to um, react if the flow rate is too high. So I will generate my own error at uh, 0 0.1 in, in the flow for, for five minutes. Uh, and the setting, as I said, is higher on the water meter. 
because I don't want that one to generate my arrows. I will do it myself here. And then I will print the text on the magic mirror saying that the water flow rate is too high. Uh, and that, of course, could indicate that you have a water leak or something else going on here. This is the only reporting or, or um, sharing of this information that I will do at this point. Um, but of course, the possibility is to add on more features here. So I need to send the information back, of course, to the magic mirror. And I will do that here. Uncomment that one. And that's it's pretty much it for right now. Let's see if this works. So it's running. Really not so much to show here since I only can show you the, the bug part. You can see the values that are being read. And the most important one is the Current value here, 53319. And we can have a look at the actual water meet because you can always go directly into that and browse into that as well. Here we can see the live picture from the meter and 53319. So that seems to be correct. And if you look at the dimes here as well, it says 53, 3, 1, 9. That's correct. It's really good. Mm -hmm.